fun twiddly minutes. On to what? On to me pump panel. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm Sophie, this is Max, and we are halfway through building our van. This week we are looking at our full plumbing system. So that's all of our cold water, hot water, waste water, and every other kind of water. <laughs> I don't think we have any other kinds of water, I don't do think we? we do either. <laughs> <laughs> so we're about to tackle all of that. Wish us luck. It could be an interesting week, especially as it's getting quite cold. So hopefully no frozen water. So a few weeks back, you guys saw us tackling this water entry point. Um, we made a bit of a mistake. Um, you can see that video up here somewhere. Um, we, <laughs> we basically didn't cut it and then put all our sheet metal in and then realized that we needed to take it all out again, as well as our bed to drill that hole. So once it was finally in, we kind of didn't want to do plumbing <laughs> for a very long time. And Max is now going to explain what happens when the water is in those tanks. So the water system for a van is really specific. So I, in my head, we've got quite a basic one for our van. Some of you might think it's really basic. Some might think it's really complicated, but we're gonna draw out roughly what our system is and try and explain it to you guys. Because it can get quite boring when we talk about plumbing, we are gonna set Max a challenge, which is a 60 second overview of our plumbing system. Do you think you can handle it? Probably not, but I'll give it a go. Okay, <laughs> on your marks, get set, go. So we have a water filler that we've already explained, that's attached on the outside of the van and that goes into our water tanks. We've actually got two 140 litre tanks that are connected to the bottom and both have air breather outs so that they should flow evenly and we come out of them and go onto our pump panel which has a filter, a pump and then an accumulator which obviously the water flows through all of them and that then goes out to our cold water on our shower and our cold water on our tap in the kitchen. That also goes into the feed for a hot tank, which has various ways of heating up that we're going to go into when we get onto it. But then the hot water comes out and goes back up to the tap and the shower. And that's our water system. 50 seconds, man. Well done. That was genius. <laughs> um, I missed something though, so I'm going to need to do that again. Oh, what did you miss? There's another set of pump and accumulator for our hot water. Ah, oh, they forgive you. you. You had like 10 seconds left. That's fine. Cool. I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> We're going to split our plumbing into two videos and this first video is going to be all about our cold water system. Next week is going to be our hot water system and maybe some of our waste. Depends how quickly we work. So the heart of our water system is the, we have two of these, they are 140 litre water tanks. Uh, they're 550 mil by 550 mil by 500 mil high. Um, and they come with a three quarter inch BSP outlet, uh, plastic welded into them, ready to go. And they live here. Most important part of the day. Bush group break. <laughs> So I'm about to cut the first hole in our tank and it's going to be for our water level gauge. This is going to tell us um, while we're in the van, how much water we've got left. Fancy electronics. It's a bit... Very neat. It's not that neat. Well done. So now Sophie has cut this beautiful hole for our tank level sender. We're gonna place it into position. We're gonna draw where our screw holes are. We're then gonna drill some holes for them and then put our screws in, which will attach it in place. 
Lots of curly whirlies. Just casually hoovering out our water tank. <laughs> And then we're putting these screws in by hand just because we don't want to over tighten anything um, or the holes that the screws are going into we don't want to damage them by using power tools to put them in we need to get it all perfectly lined up just a bit easier and more controlled using a screwdriver to do that We haven't quite got the right hole saw size for our filler points. We'll just go slightly file down. We need about an extra millimeter on the inside of that. Um, and then we ha we'll have our level gauge, our filler point and our air outlet all attached to this tank. And then we'll look at installing it in the van. So this is the uh, water filler pipe. So we are gonna stick this on the outside and it has a washer and a little nut that goes on the inside to squeeze together so that it's watertight. Now, you don't wanna over tighten these things because once you do that, they stop being waterproof. So careful does it. It's cold. It's very cold. And we didn't do anything yesterday because I had a migraine, so we had to go home. We did. But today we're going to lay some pipe work and install our tanks and build little panels for our pumps and accumulators and filters and try and yeah get all of the pipe runs done we will be productive today we will and we it's will. two o'clock <laughs> <laughs> we had things to do <laughs> the first thing we need to do is fix this piece of bathroom wall it hasn't been attached the whole time and i keep leaning on it and they keep moving it. So it's finally gonna get attached. Is it now bum wiggle proof? Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. We're just putting a small polystyrene base down under the tanks. Um, for no real reason other than supporting them a bit and to wedge them in there a bit better. We don't want them sliding around, do we? don't want them sliding around, which is why we're gonna build all this framework around them. Such a lovely sound. Thank you for that. Oh. <laughs> I got that on camera. <laughs> Nothing big actually, it won't fit. Oh my God, you're an idiot. <laughs> Where's the crack? Where's Your the crack? Where is it? <laughs> so that is our first tank into position. Before we uh, batten it all into place and lock it where it is, we're going to attach all of the connections, just in case we need to wiggle it around at all. So we're going to connect the water filler pipe to the water filler hookup we've got. Uh, the air kind of outlet pressure. Release. Outlook release bit to the air pipe we put in and um, we're not going to wire in the depth gauge right now because that's going to happen when we're doing the electrics um, then we'll put the other tank in and do the same to that so we're going to use a nice simple jubilee clip um, over this pipe on this connection that we've got which should create a nice seal for it So we're going to use a couple of these small cable tie saddles. Um, now we're attaching our an air vacuum kind of line to stop the pressure building up in the tanks. Um, so we are going to use these T pieces and connect to these attachments we made in the tanks earlier and use the little saddles, cable tie them on, attach them all into place on the underside of our bed. What have we done? We have run in our air escape line. So it runs up here and actually along our bed. 
back down into this tank and that means the air can escape all the way out of here. Um, that means when we fill up, these tanks will level themselves because they fill from the bottom. So they should stay in line with each other, which is good. Um, we've also fitted our filler pipe. Um, we haven't tested it yet, but touch wood, <laughs> it doesn't leak anywhere. We've also fitted our level sender gauge, which is gonna tell us how full our tanks are, but we haven't actually wired that in yet because that's for the electrics and that's weeks away. So we have laid out all of these pipe connections to try and make sense of um, all the equipment we have and what's, make, what's uh, running where. So we have these three quarter inch BSP connections to 12 mil pipe. Sorry. Which then those two join to allow the level up flow in the two tanks, but teed off each of them at various points of this tap, which is an emergency drain out of our tanks. And this one, which leads to our pump panel, which has all its internal connections. We then have our cold line, which tees off up to our shower tees into our hot water tank with the tap and the float valve and then also runs up to our kitchen sink. Our hot water then heats through a heater system that's there and then has an output which runs to our hot pump panel which then tees off for the hot tap on the kitchen sink and then the other line runs up to the shower. And that's everything we need we think. We've got some spare and a few of those bits are for the wastewater tank which we'll get onto another day. So we're going to start installing this and the waste water pipe. So we're going to start at the tank end with our plumbing and we're going to shove these little fittings in. We're going to use some hose clamps to make sure there's no leakage and then we're going to work our way back and hopefully sort a cold water and a hot water system. You take the hose and the hose clip and attach it to these connections. Top tip of the week. It's not a cup of tea guys, it's just boiling water so that we can mould the end of- oh it's stuck. <laughs> it's stuck. <laughs> just explain it. So we can dip the end of the pipe into the boiling water, soften it up and then it actually moulds itself to the connection. So we had a nice tight connection with no leaks. Top tip. Now that we have the tanks installed, one of the main things to do is start working out the panels that are going to hold the pumps, accumulators and filters, um, and where they're going in the back of the van. And then we can start running all the pipe work between those things. So we're going to build a board that houses this. It's going to be mounted on these little rubber spacers just to take out any vibration or anything that the pump causes. And that's going to sit uh, one near our tanks in our garage, another one under our sink in our kitchen after we come out of our hot tank. The first step is to lay out all of the pump work that we need onto a board to work out how much space we need to take up with it. So that is everything we need laid out. Now I'm up here on my own today and although I've got this bit of ply here ready to attach all this to, it still has to pass the Sophie test so I'm going to give this a quick coat of white, uh, just cheap white paint, um, just so it, even though it's in the garage it looks aesthetically pleasing. Once we've given this a coat of paint, we are gonna look at the framework within the van. And I think I'm gonna install it somewhere between the two tanks here, because it's a bit of almost wasted space back there that's gonna be difficult to use as garage space. So we'll try and put the panel somewhere here with the feed then running down to the units and the drain coming out below. So that'll sit there. So just throwing together this piece of supporting frame out of two by one, which is what we're going to attach into the van in that position there, like that. And that'll attach to this other framework that's holding in the water tanks. Um, but before we attach it in, we need to put some drill holes all the way through that we can then attach these um, M8 internal wooden kind of spiked bits on the back of which will pull nice and tight once we put the bolt through of the rubber thing and hold it in place. So there we have our bits attached in on the rear side and look at installing one of our rubber things. It should lock into place onto that. 
and what that's doing on the rear side is pulling those teeth further into the wood while we tighten it up on this side and you can see there a bit of that rubber flexing which will take any vibration out of this front plywood panel that's going to sit on the top we're going to quickly add in these small returns that we've already pre-drilled they're going to return back to in line with the checker plate two on each side and that's what we're going to put in and then attach the frame we've built already so now that we have our little supports added in which are these little returns on either side here it's time to fit this framework Now that we have the framework and all of the mounts screwed into place, we are gonna build the plywood panel that's gonna hold our pumps and accumulator. So I've just cut out a rectangle out of nine mil ply that we're gonna see if it fits into here. Just like that. So that's gonna be attached. Obviously we need to drill the four holes that the bolt's gonna come through with the nut on the front. Um, and that is what all of our panels are gonna sit on. It's gonna be raised about five mil off, off the floor um, and as you can see, there's a bit of a gap either end, so it's kind of free floating, hanging off those mounts. A useful tip when you're trying to work out where on a panel or something like that, your bolts are gonna come through, is if you take a Sharpie and just color the end of the bolts, get the board in position and press it up to where you want, then leave some marks which are where you want to drill your holes. I'm pretty pleased with that. Let's give it a splash of paint. Temperature's definitely dropped here today. It's starting to get really cold. Um, and we are waiting for paint dry, and it's not drying because it's so cold. So I've set up a little um, heater, blow heater here, blowing on that panel, which is for our pumps. That's then going to go there. But while that's happening, I'm just working out. Uh, well, it's not happening. It's not drying at all. Just working out under this sink because this is our hot water tank that's going to be insulated, and we're going to then have the hot water pump there and the accumulator probably there above it and then the hot water feed goes out there up to the sink and over to there and up into the shower it's not too long a run we just need to fit as much in this cupboard as we can so we're going to have these slide out bins probably put a shelf in above them maybe because we have the waste plumbing from the sink going to the back and down have the hot water tank and then this is our kind of usable space here that we'll store stuff in. I'm sure we'll fill it very quickly. So I'm just currently routing some of our cold water pipe work that's going to end up down near the hot water tank in the kitchen area. We're routing it round here and in and back to where the pumps are going to be. that run of beautiful, neat pipework. You're on camera. Hi, welcome to my paint shop. <laughs> what am I painting? What am I painting? I'm painting the panel that's gonna be our pump panel. So Max has designed a panel that's gonna go in the back of our van. It's gonna hold our pumps and accumulators and all that jazz for our water plumbing system coat teeth going on and i'm back baby i'm not vomiting anymore <laughs> next we're going to work out the best layout for all of these materials on this pump panel and they attach them in place First of all, for cutting the pipe work, rather than using a knife or something that doesn't give you a straight edge, it's always good to invest in a pair of pipe snips. Um, we'll put a link to these down in the description below. Basically, you can set your pipe within that, bite down, and it gives you a perfectly clean, flat, nice cut to bite your pipe up against whatever you're connecting it to. So with the barbs here and the pipe you're connecting onto it, if you hold it in the water for a couple of seconds, it pushes on much easier and then kind of shrinks down to the ribs on the barb and then you can tighten up the Jubilee clip. 
and we went with slightly different style jubilee clips to normal just because they do such a nice um tight round even pinch all the way around the thing rather than having quite a large gap at the top like a standard jubilee clip again we'll put a link to these down in the description and they're always better to use the hex part of the head rather than the screwdriver slot because you tend to uh, mangle them a bit if you do it like that What do you think of my pumps I did yesterday? They look pretty. They do. You're missing a bit. Yeah? yeah? What bit's that? The bit that you cut too short so it didn't fit. Why don't you cut me a fresh bit then? <laughs> if you hold that in there for 30 seconds and then dry it on the bit of tissue and then put it on the end of the strainer filter. And we'll put a clamp on. Drying. So strong. One of these? Yeah, no. exactly like that. Well done. Yeah. Give me a high five. I look like a loser without you. So today we are finally going to fit our cold water pump panel, which Max has been working away on. Yeah, now we've got it all made up, which you can see here. We're going to look at putting it into the van. Onto what? Onto my pump panel. What's and a pump it hurts panel? Because I squished my finger. What's a pump panel? The pump panel is what's going to move our cold water from these tanks through this tube all the way down the van to our shower and our sink. So it's quite important, really, isn't it? Yeah. What's the pump panel comprise of? We've got our emergency escape route. So this is if, you know, all hell breaks loose, we can drain the tanks. That's going to go out of the floor somewhere. We've got our main join, which means that these tanks will self-level. We've got our big on-off switch to allow the water to come out of the tanks into our little filter, which goes into our pump. And then from the pump, it goes to the accumulator. And that's to stop the water flow being like strong, not strong, strong, not strong, because that's what the pump does. Fun plumbing. So that's our pump panel fitted in. The uh, bits to the tanks aren't done yet, but it's clever design because it's like a floating panel. So hopefully it will dampen the vibrations uh, from the pump and we won't have excessive amounts of noise. Earlier in the video, you'll have seen us talking about using these little 90 degree connectors to go into our tank. Now, we tried these, and unfortunately, because the thread is fixed on these and the tank, they ended up being in sort of all sorts of random um, orientations. So we've had to get rid of these and buy some straight connectors. Unfortunately, they didn't arrive in time for us to finish our video. So we're going to do our test with um, basically a pipe. We stuck in a bucket. So we're gonna go test our water now and hopefully we don't have any leaks. So because we want to test our system but haven't yet got the connectors for our tanks, we've put the ends of our pipe into our bucket down here. And we're gonna power up our pump with this battery and do a bit of a leak test. I'm not fully confident, but hopefully it won't leak. He's, he's bought so much kitchen roll with him. <laughs> right, let's give it a go. So what should happen, fingers crossed, or in theory, the, will power the pump and it will suck water from the bucket and pressurise the whole water system all the way up to where the tap is. And the tap's currently off. Sorry, that was a horse. It's not a very happy horse. No, it's not. So the pump will start sucking water up from the bucket and pressurise the system. And it's a 20 PSI pump, so that's what it will pressurise it to. And at that point, the pump should then switch off once the system's up to pressure. And then once we open the tap, it should kick in again to keep the water uh the right pressure to come out the tap awesome so these ones down here are the ones we've got to watch for they're the ones that are going to be sat under pressure so sophie's going to check for leaks down there while i check in the van you ready uh yes <laughs> oh 
Oh, there goes the water. So that'll be the pump, like, priming. There's air in here. Yeah, there will be. It should work that out. Maybe push that end of the pipe as a little bucket down slightly. And you'll next see water in that filter. Is there any there yet? No, not yet. It'll take a while to... Oh no, the water's now coming back down. Look. The water's coming down, not up. Is it flowing at all? No, it's stuck here. Yeah. Right, we'll be back to you in a second. That was my mistake, there was water in here. It is sucking. It's sucking up through this one, <laughs> not this one. And it, our little filter is full. That's not too loud at all. It's really quiet. Should we go over the tap and see what happens? Oh my god. Here we go. Ooh. So that's the pressure of the air. So nothing's come out. There's a big run of pipe though. Now we're going. I can hear it. I can hear it. Oh! <gasps> Yay! Actually have water. Oh. I'm slowing get up to pressure. Oh, we've got a leak. <gasps> oh no. We've got one leak dripping out of here. So we'll fix that. what happens when you test your water system. <laughs> Wet everywhere. Lots of water running all sorts of places right now. It's very loud. Basically, it's a bit spluttery, but because we've got the bucket lower and there's air trapped in the pipes, we can't get it to run smoothly. But it is working, it is going to be our system, it's fine the way it is. We just need to get those connections onto our pipes, so all good. And that's our test of our cold water system. As you can see, we've got a few little niggles to sort out, but we'll get straight onto that. Um, next week, we're going to be looking at our hot water and our wastewater systems, so you don't want to miss on out. And if you liked this video, as always, please give it a thumbs up, so that really helps us, and drop any tips or comments or your any thought in the world into the comments below that'd be great and hit that subscribe button because it really really helps us and we like you joining us on our journey that means you won't miss a single one of our videos or our next dripping moment <laughs> we will see you next week bye, bye. so a few weeks back you uh, la, 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 la. so a few weeks back <laughs> <laughs>